the U.S. Special Representative for Iran and for Venezuela. Mr. Abrams, thanks for joining us. It's the U.N. 75th anniversary. I wonder what your message would be to that organization now. And I'm thinking, obviously, of regarding the U.S. position on Iran. I think the message would be that if we seek peace in the Middle East, we need to do something about Iran's support for terrorism, about its missile program, about its many malicious activities in the region and even beyond the region. And that is what we're trying to do today. The US, the EU don't clearly see eye to eye over Iran right now. What would you want from Emmanuel Macron? Well, we do see eye to eye um, substantially, and we've been told by a number of European countries that they wanted to extend the UN arms embargo on Iran, that they wished there had been a way to do it. What we want from them now is to abide by UN Security Council Resolution 2231 and join us in enforcing the UN arms embargo against Iran. Isn't the issue boiling down to the 2015 nuclear deal and Donald Trump's decision to unilaterally pull out of that? Well, <clears throat> it really boils down to Iran's behavior. Uh, even while it was negotiating uh, the JCPOA and before the U.S. began to impose, reimpose some sanctions in 2018, Iran was engaging in many, many different forms of behavior that ought to be unacceptable uh, to all of us. Uh, building its uh, missile program, intervening in Lebanon, in Syria, um, in Yemen, supporting terrorist groups, uh, supporting assassination efforts all over the world over the last few years, um, its interventions in the uh, Arabian Gulf um, against the freedom of navigation. We've seen all of this on the part of Iran, and that is why the president pulled out of the JCPOA. What we would like is a really comprehensive agreement with Iran that deals with all of those aspects of Iran's behavior. I, I can see what you're saying about the need for a broader approach on this one matter, but honing in again on the JCPOA, the, the nuclear deal of 2015, and that decision by Donald Trump to pull out when he did, um, even the UN's atomic agency didn't see any problems with what Iran was doing. In fact, said they were adhering to all the, uh, the regulations and the stipulations in that uh, agreement. You know, when the JCPOA was being negotiated, and then after it had been agreed, Iran was sitting on this massive archive of all the research it had ever done about building a nuclear weapon. And the team that had been involved in building a nuclear weapon has been kept together under the same leadership. Now, is that bad faith with respect to the JCPOA? We think it was, and we think it suggests that Iran remains interested in building a nuclear weapon. The fact remains, though, doesn't it, that the EU has a different point of view from the US on this matter? You know, it, that's true. <clears throat> but I remember back in 2018, when people said, oh, the U.S. is going to do unilateral sanctions, uh, there's no way to enforce those. And we heard that from many chanceries in Europe. The thing is, the decision about to do, whether to do business with Iran is not made in chanceries, in foreign ministries. It's made by thousands of individual uh, companies and banks and individual actors. And they realize the danger, and their lawyers are going to tell them, as they did starting in 2018, of the dangers of engaging in transactions with Iran. So we expect that these sanctions are going to have a very significant impact, no matter what the, uh, frankly, spokesmen for foreign ministries say about it. Indeed. And it is uh, undoubt uh, undoubted that these sanctions will have uh, an impact. Uh, but isn't, isn't there also a fact of the matter here that the Trump administration, in acting the way it has, has backed itself into a corner over this issue uh, with Iran. We've had the defeat in the UN uh, just a few weeks back. The fact the EU doesn't see uh, the same kind of things as the US sees. Is the Trump administration backed into a corner on this issue? <clears throat> I don't think so. I've heard people say, you know, the Americans are isolated. First of all, you had a letter from every member of the Gulf Cooperation Council to the Secretary General, to the Security Council, saying, you must extend the arms embargo to which people paid no attention. You know, we wouldn't be where we are today if the UN arms embargo had been extended. That was our goal. And frankly, the EU3 were unable to do that, and one might even say didn't even try very hard. So 
If you don't like the situation we're in, I would refer you back to that, to the failure to extend the arms embargo on Iran, the UN arms embargo, which is really extremely dangerous. And one of the reasons we didn't like the JCPOA was that it was only a five-year arms embargo. I mean, can you think, those five years are now up, think of giving that regime in Tehran with all of the malicious activity in which it is engaged, including the support for terrorism. Give it uh, the free right to buy and sell arms as it wants. I mean, that's an incredible position. We are not in that position today because of the actions this administration took. Elliot Abrams, U.S. Special Representative for Iran and for Venezuela. Thank you, sir, for joining us here on France 24. We appreciate your time and thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts uh, on the uh, situation uh, regarding uh, Iran and those sanctions uh, reimposed by the United States.